My sister secretly dated my ex-fiancé for years. When I found out, my family took her side. I turned my heartbreak into a successful art career. I never thought I'd be in this situation, but here I am, feeling completely lost and betrayed. My name is Dorothy, and I need to share my story to get some advice on how to handle this mess. Growing up, my sister Grace, 25 female, and I were inseparable. We were raised in a small town in Ohio, where everyone knew each other's business. Our parents, both high school teachers, instilled in us the importance of education and family. Grace was always the golden child, straight A's, captain of the debate team, and homecoming queen. I, on the other hand, was more of a free spirit. I loved art and spent most of my time in the school's art room, much to my parents' dismay. Despite our differences, Grace and I were best friends. We shared everything, clothes, secrets, dreams. When I decided to pursue art in college instead of the more practical business degree our parents wanted, Grace was my biggest supporter. She helped me convince our parents and even assisted me in putting together my portfolio for art school applications. I met Ryan, 30 male, during my sophomore year of college. I was working part-time at a local coffee shop to help pay for art supplies when he walked in. Ryan was a business major, tall, with a charming smile that made my heart skip a beat. He became a regular at the shop, always ordering the same thing, a large Americano with an extra shot. We started talking, and soon, those conversations turned into dates. Ryan was everything I thought I wanted. He was ambitious, driven, and seemed to genuinely care about me. He supported my art, even buying one of my paintings for his apartment. We dated for five years, through the ups and downs of college and the start of our careers. When he proposed on my 25th birthday, at the same coffee shop where we met, I thought I had found my happily ever after. Grace was thrilled when I told her about the engagement. She immediately volunteered to be my maid of honor and threw herself into wedding planning. I was grateful for her enthusiasm, especially since our parents were a bit lukewarm about the whole thing. They liked Ryan but were concerned about my career prospects as an artist. The first time Grace met Ryan was at our family's annual 4th of July barbecue. I remember feeling nervous, I wanted them to get along. To my relief, they hit it off immediately. They discovered they had similar tastes in music and spent a good portion of the evening discussing their favorite bands. I was happy to see my sister and my fiancé bonding. As the months went by, Grace and Ryan seemed to become good friends. They'd often team up during family game nights, and Grace would sometimes ask Ryan for career advice, as she was just starting her job in marketing. I never suspected anything was amiss. In fact, I was pleased that they got along so well. About six months before our wedding, things started to change. Ryan became distant, always busy with work. Our communication, which had always been strong, started to break down. He'd come home late, too tired to talk, and would often spend weekends at the office. I tried to talk to him about it, but he brushed off my concerns, saying it was just a busy period at work and things would calm down soon. I confided in Grace about my worries. She listened sympathetically and assured me that cold feet were normal before a wedding. She encouraged me to be patient with Ryan, saying that men sometimes needed space when facing big life changes. I trusted her advice, after all, she had always been the more level-headed one in our relationship. Then, two months before the wedding, Ryan dropped a bombshell. He came to our apartment one evening, looking serious. He sat me down and told me he wasn't ready for marriage. He said he loved me, but he felt we were moving too fast. He wanted to call off the engagement. I was devastated. It felt like my whole world had crumbled. All our plans, our dreams for the future, gone in an instant. I remember calling Grace that night, sobbing uncontrollably. She came over immediately, holding me as I cried and helping me pack some of Ryan's things. In the weeks that followed, Grace was my rock. She moved in with me temporarily, making sure I ate and helping me cancel wedding arrangements. She listened patiently as I cycled through anger, sadness, and confusion. She even took time off work to accompany me on a healing retreat I had impulsively booked. During this time, I threw myself into my art. I created a series of abstract paintings that reflected my emotional turmoil. To my surprise, these pieces caught the attention of a local gallery owner. This led to my first solo exhibition, which became a turning point in my career as an artist. Grace was there for every step of this journey. She helped me frame my paintings, spread the word about the exhibition, and even managed to convince our skeptical parents to attend the opening night. Seeing my art displayed in a gallery, with Grace beaming proudly beside me, helped me realize that there was life after Ryan. As the years passed, I slowly healed and moved on. I focused on my art career, which was beginning to take off. I had exhibitions in neighboring states and even sold a few pieces to corporate clients. I rarely thought about Ryan anymore and had even started dating casually. Grace and I remained close, though we saw each other less frequently due to our busy lives. She had been promoted at her marketing firm and often had to travel for work. We made sure to meet up at least once a month for sister nights, where we'd catch up over wine and cheesy romantic comedies. Last week, everything changed. I was at my favorite coffee shop, not the one where I met Ryan, but a quirky little place near my new apartment, when I overheard a conversation that made my blood run cold. Two women at the next table were gossiping about a mutual friend who had been secretly dating her sister's ex-fiancé for years. As I listened, horrified, I realized they were talking about Grace and Ryan. They mentioned names, details that could only apply to my sister and my ex. Apparently, Grace and Ryan had been seeing each other behind my back for over a year before he broke off our engagement. 
They've been together ever since, hiding their relationship from everyone, especially me. The women talked about how Grace was always paranoid about being caught, constantly looking over her shoulder when she and Ryan were out together. They mentioned that Ryan was planning to propose soon, but was worried about how to break the news to the family, to me. I left the coffee shop in a daze, my mind reeling from this information. How could Grace, my sister, my best friend, betray me like this? And Ryan, was our entire relationship a lie? Were they laughing at me behind my back all this time? The more I thought about it, the more things started to make sense. Grace's increased travel for work, her vague answers when I asked about her love life, the way she changed the subject whenever Ryan's name came up. I felt like a fool for not seeing it sooner. I haven't confronted either of them yet. Part of me wants to explode and let them know I know everything. Another part wants to pretend I never heard anything and just cut them both out of my life silently. I'm torn between rage, hurt, and disbelief. My parents have no idea about this situation. They've always favored Grace, and I'm afraid they might take her side if I tell them. Our mom always joked that Grace would end up with someone like Ryan, successful, ambitious, the kind of son-in-law they'd always wanted. I don't want to cause a rift in the family, but I also can't bear the thought of pretending everything is fine at family gatherings. I'm not sure what to do next. Should I confront Grace and Ryan? Should I tell my parents? Or should I just walk away from all of them? I feel so betrayed and alone right now. The sister I thought I could trust with my life has been lying to me for years. The man I thought I'd spend my life with has been sneaking around with her. It feels like my whole life has been a lie. Any advice would be appreciated. I feel lost and don't know where to turn. Update 1. Thank you all for your support and advice. Your comments gave me the courage to take action. After reading through your suggestions, I decided to confront Grace first before involving anyone else. I felt I deserved to hear the truth from her directly. I invited Grace over to my apartment for what I said was a casual sister night. When she arrived, I could tell she sensed something was off. I had removed all the photos of us from my walls, leaving conspicuous empty spaces. Grace's eyes darted around the room, a puzzled expression on her face. I didn't beat around the bush. I told her exactly what I had overheard at the coffee shop. The color drained from her face, and for a moment, she was speechless. Then, she broke down crying, confirming everything before she even spoke a word. Through her tears, Grace admitted to her relationship with Ryan. She claimed it started innocently, Ryan had reached out to her for advice about our relationship, and they became close friends. According to her, feelings developed over time, and they kissed for the first time about a year before my wedding was supposed to happen. Grace swore they tried to fight their feelings, but eventually gave in. She said she was the one who convinced Ryan to break off our engagement because she couldn't bear the guilt anymore. She begged for my forgiveness, saying she never meant to hurt me and that she had been living with this guilt for years. As I listened to her confession, memories flooded back. I remembered the times Grace had been too busy to hang out, the way she quickly changed the subject whenever Ryan's name came up, the nervous glances she'd give her phone when we were together. It all made sense now, and I felt like a fool for not seeing it sooner. I was too shocked and angry to say much. I told her to leave and that I needed time to process everything. As she was leaving, Grace mentioned that Ryan didn't know I had found out, and begged me not to confront him yet. The audacity of her request only fueled my anger more. After she left, I spent hours crying and going through old photos and messages, trying to spot any signs I might have missed. How could I have been so blind? I found myself questioning every interaction, every family gathering, wondering if there had been hidden glances or touches I hadn't noticed. The next day, I received a barrage of texts and calls from Grace, begging to talk. I ignored them all. Then, to my surprise, my mom called. Apparently, Grace had told her everything, hoping our mother could mediate the situation. I was furious that Grace had involved our parents before I was ready. My mom tried to convince me to forgive Grace, saying that love happens in mysterious ways and that I should be happy my sister found someone. She even suggested that since I was over Ryan, I should be okay with their relationship. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It felt like my entire family was choosing Grace over me, just like they always had. I hung up on my mom and blocked both her and Grace's numbers. I needed space to think without their influence. However, this also meant I felt incredibly alone. I couldn't talk to my best friend about this because, well, she was the problem. As I was wallowing in my apartment, surrounded by half-finished paintings that suddenly felt meaningless, I received a text from an unknown number. It was Ryan, asking if we could meet to talk. Grace had told him that I knew, and he wanted to explain his side of the story. The text brought back a flood of memories, our first date, the nights we stayed up late talking about our future, the moment he proposed. But it also brought back the pain of our breakup, now intensified by the knowledge of his betrayal. I'm torn about whether I should meet him. Part of me wants answers, to understand how the man I thought I knew could do this to me. But another part feels like nothing he could say would justify their actions. I'm also afraid that seeing him might bring back old feelings I've worked hard to overcome. My art, which has always been my solace, feels tainted now. The paintings I created during my relationship with Ryan, and those I made after our breakup, all feel like lies. I've been staring at a blank canvas for hours, unable to create anything. I've also been thinking about my career. The gallery owner who gave me my first break is a family friend. What if this scandal affects my professional reputation? The art world is small, and gossip travels fast. I feel like I'm at a crossroads. 
Do I meet Ryan and hear him out, potentially opening old wounds but maybe getting some closure? Do I try to salvage my relationship with my family, even though they seem to be taking Grace's side? Or do I make a clean break from all of them and start fresh somewhere new? What should I do? Should I meet Ryan and hear him out? Or should I continue to keep my distance from both of them? How do I move forward when the two people I trusted most have betrayed me so deeply? Update 2. After much deliberation and sleepless nights, I decided to meet with Ryan. I felt I deserved answers and closure, even if it would be painful. We agreed to meet at a neutral location, a park near my apartment where I often go to sketch. Seeing Ryan again after all this time was surreal. He looked older, more worn down than I remembered. The confident, ambitious man I once knew seemed diminished somehow. As soon as he started talking, I could tell he was nervous. He began by apologizing profusely, saying that he never meant for any of this to happen. Ryan's version of events mostly aligned with Grace's. He admitted that he had developed feelings for her over time, but insisted that nothing physical happened until after he broke off our engagement. He said he had been confused about his feelings for months and didn't know how to handle the situation. What shocked me most was when Ryan revealed that he and Grace had broken up several times over the years due to the guilt they both felt. He said they had tried to stay apart, but always ended up back together. Ryan claimed he truly loved Grace, but the weight of their betrayal had been eating at him for years. As I listened to Ryan, I felt a mix of emotions, anger, hurt, but also a strange sense of relief. Hearing him talk about their relationship made me realize that I had dodged a bullet. The Ryan I was seeing now was not the man I thought I knew and loved years ago. After Ryan finished talking, I told him exactly how their betrayal had affected me. How it had shattered my trust not just in relationships, but in my own family. I told him about the years I spent questioning my self-worth, wondering what I had done wrong. To my surprise, letting out all these pent-up feelings was cathartic. For the first time since finding out, I felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. I realized that I didn't need their apologies or explanations to move on with my life. I ended the conversation by telling Ryan that while I could never forget what they did, I was choosing to let go of my anger for my own peace of mind. I made it clear that I wanted nothing to do with either him or Grace moving forward. As I walked away from that meeting, I felt a sense of closure I hadn't expected. I decided to take a week off work and booked a solo trip to an artist retreat in New Mexico. I needed time away from everything to process my feelings and decide on my next steps. During my trip, I did a lot of soul-searching. I spent my days painting the desert landscape, pouring my emotions onto canvas. I realized that while the betrayal hurt, it didn't define me. I had built a life I was proud of, with a successful career and good friends. I didn't need toxic family members or a cheating ex in my life. One evening, as I watched the sunset paint the sky in vibrant oranges and purples, I had an epiphany. I decided to create a new series of paintings, one that would tell the story of betrayal, healing, and rebirth. This idea ignited a spark of creativity I hadn't felt in weeks. I'm now back from my trip, feeling refreshed and more certain about my path forward. I've decided to maintain minimal contact with my family, at least for now. I'm not ready to forgive Grace or have her in my life, regardless of what my parents think. I've thrown myself into my new painting series. It's raw and emotional, unlike anything I've done before. My gallery owner friend, after hearing a vague version of what happened, is excited about the new direction my work is taking. Tomorrow, I have an appointment to see a therapist. I realize I have a lot to unpack from this experience, and I want to make sure I process everything in a healthy way. I've been overwhelmed by the support I've received here. Thank you all for your kind words and advice. It's helped me more than you know. Update 3. It's been six months since my last update, and I wanted to share where things stand now. A lot has changed, and I'm still processing everything, but I feel like I'm finally on a path to healing. First, the therapy sessions have been incredibly helpful. My therapist has helped me work through my feelings of betrayal and abandonment, and I've made significant progress in rebuilding my self-esteem. I've learned that it's okay to set boundaries with family and that I'm not responsible for other people's actions. The painting series I started after my trip to New Mexico has taken on a life of its own. I've completed 12 large-scale pieces that chronicle my journey through betrayal, anger, and ultimately, healing. The raw emotion in these paintings has resonated with people in a way I never expected. My gallery showcased the series last month, and the response was overwhelming. Art critics praised the depth and honesty of the work, and several pieces sold on opening night. This success has opened new doors for me professionally. I've been invited to participate in a prestigious art fair in New York next spring, and a modern art museum in Chicago has expressed interest in acquiring one of my pieces for their permanent collection. It's surreal to see my pain transformed into something beautiful that touches others. As for my family situation, things are still complicated. My parents eventually realized that their initial reaction was insensitive and have since apologized. We're slowly rebuilding our relationship, but I've made it clear that I won't tolerate them pressuring me to reconcile with Grace. We've had some honest conversations about the years of favoritism and how it affected me. It's been difficult, but I feel like they're finally seeing me for who I am. Speaking of Grace, she's made several attempts to reach out over the past few months. She's sent letters, emails, and even tried to contact me through mutual friends. While part of me appreciates her efforts, I'm still not ready to have her in my life. I've asked everyone to respect my boundaries and not pass along messages from her. It's been hard, especially during family events, but I'm standing firm in my decision. 
I heard through the grapevine that Grace and Ryan got engaged last month. Surprisingly, the news didn't affect me as much as I thought it would. If anything, it reinforced my decision to keep my distance. I wish them well, but I don't want to be a part of their lives. On a more positive note, my career has been thriving. The success of my recent exhibition has led to more opportunities than I ever imagined. I've been approached by a publishing house about creating a book featuring my artwork alongside essays about healing from betrayal. It's still in the early stages, but I'm excited about the possibility of helping others through my art. I've also started dating again, this time with a healthier mindset. I met a great guy named Alex, 32M, at an art supply store. We bonded over our shared love of obscure paint colors and have been seeing each other for a couple of months now. While it's still early days, I'm cautiously optimistic. Alex knows about my past and has been incredibly understanding and supportive. My experience has also inspired me to give back to the community. I've started volunteering at a local women's shelter, teaching art classes as a form of therapy. Seeing these women find strength and expression through art has been incredibly rewarding and has given me a new perspective on my own journey. Looking back, I realize that finding out about Grace and Ryan's betrayal, as painful as it was, sparked a journey of self-discovery and growth for me. I'm stronger now, more sure of myself, and clearer about what I want in life and in relationships. To anyone going through a similar situation, know that it does get better. It's okay to take time for yourself, to be angry, to set boundaries. Healing isn't linear, and there's no set timeline. Be patient with yourself. Thank you all again for your support throughout this journey. Your words of encouragement and advice have been a lifeline during some of my darkest moments. I'm not sure what the future holds, but I'm facing it with optimism and strength.